Hey, uh, in order to set up a Raspberry Pi as a media center, I found that ideally you obviously need a Raspberry Pi. And this is the style case that I prefer. And it's available on Amazon, among other places. Um, I prefer using <coughs> a Wi-Fi dongle. Um, you have to set up your operating system on a memory card. You need a, a USB hub. I prefer this USB hub for a couple of reasons. It's really small, fairly inexpensive. Um, it's a four port USB hub the the power supply is 2.6 amps and it doesn't back feed into the USB ports on the um, Raspberry Pi um, then you need a, a keyboard some kind of a mouse touchpad something like that and of course for this keyboard Wi-Fi dongle or actually it's just uh, what a wireless dongle and an external hard drive to contain your media I do primarily videos um, to put it together what you end up with um, the best way for putting putting it together from what I've seen you need a micro USB plug into the to power the Raspberry Pi plug that and let it pull its power off of the USB hub then the Wi-Fi dongle the key keyboard dongle the external hard drive for your media and your power supply and then um, your SD card and then you'll need <coughs> a um, Uh, HDMI cable for most newer TVs and that's pretty much it um, and then just you know setting up the SD card and running the software to me that's too much cabling and too cluttered because uh, I wanted I wanted to make a Raspberry Pi into a portable media player. So instead, what I've done is to take a, I use the same case, the same style case, um, the Raspberry Pi, and there's the base of the case. I removed the USB um, power supply plug-in and I was I attempted to solder directly on those connectors to give power feed power but it's far too difficult for me to be able to solder I'm not that good at it so um, instead on the capacitor you can solder the the um, negative towards the outside of the board beside on the connection for the capacitor and the positive on the ins towards the inside of the board I can see that very well um, and that'll feed power in there and to the best of my knowledge all it's bypassing 
is that little component right there um, is part of the um, the safety system as far as the um, the voltage. Um, so I tap power in there, and then on the back side of the circuit board that comes out of um, out of that USB hub, I solder directly on the connections where the power input comes in so I don't have any voltage drop issues. So it's coming straight off of the 2 point amp, 2.6 amp power input. And I leave enough length in the cord and make it so it coils so when you put these together it coils up in between there. In order to have plenty of space to do that, I remove the um, the the what goes there is, is a monitor um, ribbon cable connector, which I'll never use. And the only thing I'm removing it is making sure that none of the solder points are connecting each other. Make sure it comes off cleanly. Then I take the in order to fit it in the case I had to use a 90 degree um, mini USB adapter and strip strip the wire back off it and make sure it's got enough length and where it'll coil to run down through that hole which is a mounting hole the circuit board mounting hole uh, and then on the back side I use um, heat shrink tubing to make sure that it doesn't press against any of the other components and end up um, chafing and shorting anything out. And then on the far right the black wire connects to the negative. The green and white wire are connected to the um, communication lines and then the red wire is soldered to the positive um, connector that leads back to the USB um, micro USB plug that plugs in to communicate from the Pi to the hub. Um, because I soldered onto this onto the bottom row I plugged which go to, which connect to the upper the top port I just took a uh, little plastic plug that comes in a lot of HDMI cables when they ship them and carved it down slightly so it blocks that because I'm not sure if it's if it'll function properly due to the fact that it, it's also running to communicate to the hub. Odds are it won't. Uh, then what I do is I take the I left the power cable in where it plugs directly in where it plugs directly into the USB hub and on the lid I simply cut a slit for for that wire to go in and I can get it lined up right how do I have that and that lines up where the hub mounts, I'll eventually use an adhesive and the hub will be stuck in the top of the case. And then I cut, and, and off of the, the hub, I have the Wi-Fi dongle plugged inside. And this connector 
to communicate from the Pi to the hub has to be a 90 to clear. And that's why you, you, know, you have to have a 90 connector on the end of the cable. Then from there, let me find the, the other components. From there, I can connect my keyboard, wireless keyboard dongle, which for the moment, since it's, it's, it's not adhered in place, plugging these devices in holds it in place. Um, and then I plug in, as soon as I can get it, Then I plug in the external hard drive. Now, then you take the mount the Raspberry Pi circuit board into the lower part of the case, and essentially the wire will, will coil in there, and you have to make sure that the uh, the Wi-Fi dongle and the 90 degree plug to communicate to the hub clear the um, the composite video out and the 3.5 millimeter stereo jack and now you've got it in a nice neat package um, one thing I did notice is I haven't cut, haven't cut this the slot that the power cable to power the hub, which in turn powers the Raspberry Pi. I haven't cut that slot deep enough, so the GPIO pins are barely hitting it. So I'm gonna have to deepen that slot just a little bit, so the case will clip in and stay tight, stay stay clipped in all the way. So what you end up with is very little wiring and an easily portable system. One addition while I'm ex while I'm working with this which I'm not completed with it I got a little USB fan because I found the heat even without the USB hub in the, ho the housing the Raspberry Pi I've seen it get up to 140, 150 degrees, which is too hot, in my opinion. So temporarily, while I'm working with it, I simply tape over the ventilation holes on the bottom of the the case. I tape the fan in place, and I use the USB connector to power it to cool the system. And eventually. I'm gonna have it where you don't, so you don't have to use the USB plug-in. I'll have it where, in the, in the, on the top side of the case, I'll drill a series of holes in a pattern that'll fit in the center hole of that fan and adhere the fan in place just like that. And now, once once that's all put together, and this is also the shortest USB cable I could find so far to plug into the external hard drive, I'd like to find a shorter one. And essentially now, that's the entire package. And eventually this will be hardwired into under the lid to the USB hub. And now you've got a package where all you have to do is carry it, carry it around basically with the USB hub power supply. You can put it'll fit in a small camera bag with plenty enough for plenty of room left to fit uh, roughly a three foot or one meter. Um, HDMI cable 
which HDMI ports are right under the USBs now, to connect to any HDMI TV. If they have a sound, if you take it over to friends and they have a, a sound system that's better than what's built in the TV, or doesn't, won't take in the HDMI directly um, for the surround sound or any whatever fancy sound system they have, you carry a cable for the three and a half millimeter cable jack to plug into whatever sound system they may have and if they don't have a TV with HDMI, if they have an older TV you can use the composite video port to connect to an older TV and now all you're doing basically all, all you're doing basically then is carrying the external hard drive the Raspberry Pi with a fan mounted on it to make sure you don't have heating issues a uh, little wireless keyboard and the um, then you'll just have to add your HDMI cable, sound cable, depending on what kind of TV. If it's a more, if if it's it's getting pretty prevalent where you're not going to need the composite uh, video. Where in most cases, this the stereo jack, the output is convenient for connecting into better sound systems. In some cases. And other than that, the HDMI port is plenty enough. I've tested several variations of software, um, and the one that I prefer so far is XBN, and I'm pretty happy with that. So I've got a little more work to do to this to get everything permanently mounted. Um, get the, get the fan, the cooling fan, hardwired in, and basically, when you take it somewhere, all you'll be doing is plugging in your power supply and your HDMI cable, and it'll all fit in a really small camera bag, and that's kind of the idea for it. I would also like to set it up with a um, with with a, another SD card to boot up on for running. Uh, retro games, but I haven't really gotten into working with the setup with retro games. But in comparison, to me, this is not a bad little package uh, once I get it all configured and everything. Just a little more finishing up of it, basically.